Welcome back to a new video here in Suave. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can create a mini screen. I call them mini screens. I'm actually working on a YouTube or creators pack bundle, but that's going to be a topic for another video. So these are the mini screens. This is great if you want to create videos, maybe reaction videos or basically any type of video where you have a, maybe a presentation behind you or so showcasing like that. So let me just get right to the point and show you what we're going to do. So the first thing that we're going to need is we're going to go and first you're going to have the background clip, which is going to be pretty much anything. Now, also in this video, I'm going to show you how to save it so that you can later on find it in your effects tab. Okay. After you have both videos, at least for the first time when you're creating it, you will want to go into fusion on the top video. This is what it will look. And right now you will see the resolution. There is the one of the video, but we don't want that because sometimes it might change things a little bit if we do that. So we're going to go and create a background right here and we're going to press control T on this merge node so that we're taking this background into account. Now it still has the same resolution. So we're going to go here to image and we're going to take the outer resolution out and we're going to set this up at 1920 by 1080p. That way it's going to be by default. And then if you actually work on a bigger timeline, then resizing these shouldn't be that big of a problem because you can actually always just go in, in the inspector and adjust things later. OK, with our background note there, we're going to actually set these the color to zero. So it's going to be transparent. We're not seeing it right now because it's connected to the foreground, this media in, but what we can do is actually going to create a new merge node right here, which is going to be the first one where it's going to be our next background. So we're going to click background here and add these on top. And we're going to add an ellipse because I want it to be a circle one in this case. Right now it's showing all black because we haven't connected this yet. So we're going to go and connect this here. And I want this to be in here, but I don't want it to be that big. So we can make these a little bit smaller like that. Also, I want this to have a sort of like an intro animation. It's not necessary, but if you want, you can do that. So in this case, I want to take this solid out and I want to adjust the border width. And then I will have to make this smaller. Like that, maybe. And then we're going to take the cap style. So then we animate these. Oops, and that's a bit too big. That's why we went all the way to the other side. So we can fix that by tweaking these like that. It's a lot of tweaking when creating stuff like this. That seems to be about right. OK, so I want these to be like these and be a couple of different colors. So in this case, what we're going to do is. Another thing we before we actually animate these is we're going to create a second ellipse and I want this to be the same size of the ending product or like these like that. That seems to be about right and here and we can leave that there for a little bit we're gonna rename these ellipse mask okay we have this first one so we're gonna animate the ellipse already just so that we can copy these later and not have to do everything from scratch so we're gonna go from zero all the way to like frame 15 and we're gonna animate the length so that it shows up there and now we can actually just copy these paste it up there and we're going to connect these to a new merge node. It's going to be ellipse number two. In this case, to keep the video not that long, we're going to just use two different colors. So we're going to change the color up here and make these orange. And we're going to go to the ellipse right here, go to the spline and ellipse. And then here we're going to select these and move a little bit forward so that there's a little bit of time in between both of them like that. After you have that, you can actually just select this spline of both of them, and then we can select these and press F. And if you press T, you can animate the ease in and ease out values. If you want to see it more closely, press zoom to fit right here, and then you can see them actively moving around. OK, after we have that, it's really up to you. And if you don't like it, you can always change it like that. And what I want to do also is one the last one is we're going to copy these like that. We're going to go to our media in and we're going to connect these to our merge node. Now that doesn't look that well, right? Don't worry. We'll fix this in a little bit. Okay. After we're here, we're going to go and add our ellipse mask to the merge node. Now we're not seeing anything because we still have this top one on top. 
So we can press number two on this merge node and then we're going to add a transform node to the media in. So we're going to press control and spacebar and add a transform, make these smaller like that. And then we can move these and position these like that. And when we export these as a macro, then you'll have the option to actually adjust these and then you can move these more if you want to. OK, we have that there. Now we have to see a way of these orange one to disappear. We have to make it disappear. Now, if you're a little bit of a perfectionist, you're going to want to adjust this a little bit. So we can do that by going to the ellipse number two and we're going to press holding control and make this a little bit bigger like that until we don't see the little black dot there. And then we can just go and copy this border width value and also put it on the black one. That way there's no point right there like that. OK, after we have that animation of the circle, we want to have a mask that's going to take these colors out. That's what this one is for. Another thing that I just noticed when I was checking these, because why is it right here like that, right? Is that these backgrounds show up with the auto resolution automatically. So if you're working with a clip that's bigger resolution than normal timeline of like 1920 by 1080p, these will have the resolution of the first clip that we open in Fusion. So we're going to have to go on each of these background nodes and then make these 1920 by 1080p. And then we can actually move these to the side again, and we're going to be able to cover that and put it into position. OK, now this ellipse is a little bit too big, so we can actually make these a little bit smaller like that and adjust these. There it goes. Oops, not not quite. I can still see a little bit of a detail in there, so we want to make it a little bit smaller, maybe, and then copy these. OK, now that we have that covered and we're going to just copy these ellipse from scratch and get rid of the last one. We're going to rename these lips mask two, just so we know where everything is. Now you can already see it in action like that because the masks only affect the foreground, but we want these to be, we want to see the black ones too. So we're going to have to go to the ellipse mask here, go to this plan, selecting these, we can hold control. We can hold a shift, I'm sorry, and then move these ahead a little bit. Now we're not seeing these because right now it's not inverted. So we have to click here, invert, and now we're going to be able to see these opening up like that. Now we don't want our first circle to be there from scratch. So what we have to do here is we're going to go to this merge node and we're going to go and check when these both of these circles are completely covering it. And then we're going to create a keyframe for the blending mode right here at one and then one more frame ahead. And then we're going to go back and make these zero. That way it's going to start empty Then it's going to go like that. And then it shows up, which is great. Now you can also animate a couple of different things if you want these, for example, to show up and be zooming in maybe a little bit. So like if we start from here and then go a few frames forward, then like that. So as it disappears, camera is coming a little bit forward. That's just extra stuff. Now for the outro, usually you can just reverse these. So we can press Ctrl Spacebar and add a time stretcher. I'm going to go here to frame. I don't know why these out oh, right now. The clip is really long, so you're going to have to work with whatever type of clip you have. But if you start with a five second clip, then these will be easier because then you can add a keyframe stretcher to work within so then you can make these dynamic for the outro part too. Now, another thing is, is that if you have animated elements in the middle that are happening, if you use the keyframe stretcher, they might slow down a little bit. So that's why in the pack I'm making, I'm actually not using an outro animation for these. For the time stretcher, what you want to do is press a keyframe here at zero. And then at 460 or right before the clip ends, you're going to create a keyframe with that same number of here. And then you're going to go to the ending frame of your animation. If you press control A, you can see everything that way. 38 is the last one. OK, so here you can go to 460. And one frame forward, just go and click 38 right here and then go 38 frames forward there. And you can set this up to zero. So it's basically going to reverse these like that. There it goes. 
We're not going to do that in this case, but I just wanted to show you. Okay, now how do you save these as an effect so that you can reuse this later? Now, a couple of things that you want to take into account is that you have already two things that you want to that you want to export with values that you want to be able to change on the effects tab. Then you also have the transform right here. And another thing that you also have is the ellipses that are animated, which they all need to have a motion blur. So you're going to go and create an expression so that all of these ellipses are connected in the motion blur section. That way you don't have to export each of them. Now motion blur works in a way that if you, if we activate these right now, You will see that the movement is a little bit different because there's that little blurry thing, which is called motion blur, obviously. Okay, so with these activated, the way to set up the expression is actually not that complicated. It's just a little bit of a time uh, consuming task because you have to right click everything and then click on expression, including the motion blur at the top. Now, usually what I do is I go and write ellipse one dot, then I will copy these paste these on each of the options and I will leave this last one for last because if you do it first and this is not activated then it will close sometimes okay here you can press plus sign and it will add the number or the name of these automatically sometimes it replaces it so you have to manually copy these ellipse again and with these selected you will have to do it so like these basically copy the ellipse and then you press motion blur now this motion blur is activated so if we deactivate it you will see that this one is gone too and if we activate it again this one is activated again and any changes you make to this first one will be the same on this one okay let's do the same thing for the other one and then we can go and then i will show you how to export this as a macro now before exporting we want to rename these nodes so circle one and then circle two so that when we export it we can see these more easily and then we can change the colors there okay in the ins so that we can easily identify them in the inspector window so we're going to go to the transform right here and holding control we're going to select the circle one the circle two and lastly this ellipse which is going to be the motion blur then after you have them all selected press control a and you can right click on top of any of them basically and then go to macro and create macro here on the macro section we're gonna name these so it's gonna be and then i i just like to put suave right here just branding i guess okay then we're gonna go and we want the position of now the things that we want to be able to change on the effects tab would be the center position and the size so we're gonna go here to center and size you can actually rename these position so now in the inspector when we open the macro or the effect it's gonna show up as position and not center after we have that we can close this one and we have to go to circle one and we're gonna go towards this color if you want to be able to export gradients and put the gradient color in these then you have to add all of these so we can act since I'm going to share these with you, I'm just going to add all of them. That way, if you want to play around with that, you can do that. And lastly, we're going to go to the ellipse and find the commons section. And here are the motion blur values. Now, I do have a more advanced video of creating macros in which I show my whole process of adding labels later on so that they are more organized and that you have those drop down menus and stuff like that. So like these ones. Okay, then we're going to close this and it's going to prompt us to save these and then you will just save these into a folder that you like. So in order for you to be able to install these more easily and actually put it in the effects tab, we're going to create a new folder right here and we're going to call this edit. We're going to go in it and we're going to go to new folder and then we're going to write the effects on these go in it again and here you can actually just paste this or if you want you can add another another folder or subfolder which is going to act as the folder right here in the effects tab i'll show you in a second so this one is going to be called mini screen demo suave there we have that here we're going to open these again and this is where we're going to save these so we're going to click save and then we are set now you wonder so what do we do now so if we go back to the edit page here 
we can see these already active. And that is because we still have to install these into our effects folder, like this one, for example. This is another one that I was testing out. So to install this, you want to make these edit folder into a DRFX file. So for that, we're going to right click and we're going to add these to archive. And then here we can actually just rename these to, let's say, Suave Mini Screen Demo. And we're going to go here to the where it says zip, select that, and then change this to DRFX. If, after we click OK, then this will open. And if you double click these, DaVinci will show up right here and it says this will add selected template bundle so that it will install in the effects tab. Here you can see it already in effect. Now make sure you have DaVinci in the latest version because in previous versions you were not able to do it right away. You had to go into the effects, the effects that came by default. So it was complicated. Here we can see this mini screen tutorial. Now it doesn't have a thumbnail right here yet, but I will add that on the actual file that I'm sharing with you after this video. So if you want to download that, make sure to check the link down in the description so you can check it out there. So after we add the video that you have here, which will be your main video or any type of video, basically, then you can go to the mini screen tutorial and just add this on top of your clip and voila. Then you go to the effects section and you will see these um, like that. Just press play right here and here you can change the color of these so that it matches your style and your brand, however you want. Now, this is going to look different in the one that I'm sharing with you because this one doesn't have all the labels. And as I mentioned, if you want to check out the video, which is a little bit more advanced, which requires a little bit of coding, then you can check out this little bubble right here and you can see it there. Now, that is it for this video. If you want to download these, check out the link down in the description. And if you make your own, then feel free to share it in the comments if you use it on a video so that we can check it out. That is it for this video. I hope that you enjoy it and that you find it helpful. And I will see you in the next video here in Suave. Bye.